morning, living hope, and welcome to day two of our fast. I just want to thank each and every one of you for joining me this morning. I hope you had a blessed day yesterday. And just to encourage us that our theme is going down into the well. I mean, yesterday, just a brief recap. We talked about the blessing that was bestowed upon Isaac and the covenant that God had made with Abraham. He was making with Isaac and his descendants to come. So we will draw our attention to uh, verses 7 through to 13. And if you read through the story, uh, it talks about how God blessed Isaac. And then immediately Isaac turns around and lies. So I just want to say today that even in our faithlessness, that God is still faithful. You see, Isaac did exactly what his father did a hundred years before. He repeated the same cycle. He turns around and lies point blank to Kim Abimelech. What he says is, uh, they asked him, who is this that you travel with? And he said, hey, it's, it's my sister. But then a little bit later on, after he'd stayed in that land, Abimelech noticed that he saw Isaac caressing Rebekah. And Abimelech said, wait a minute. This guy has said that this is his sister. But in actual fact, he's showing actions that this may actually be his wife. So then Abraham, sorry, Isaac gets questioned. What's going on here? You say it's your sister, but in actual fact, your charisma is your wife. And just as his father did when he lied about Sarah, if you read the text, it says that Rebecca was beautiful. And not many uh, women in the Bible are recognized as beautiful. But Rebecca was. And... Isaac was afraid that they would kill him because they thought he was his sister. If they knew that it was his wife, then they would leave her alone. So then Abimelech, who is not a Christian, who is not chosen by God, turns around and gives Isaac a good lesson about lying. You know, lying is, uh, has its own consequences. You surely be found out. Uh, we all know that. And Isaac lied point blank right after God had blessed him. You see, sometimes we do that. You know, we know the principles of the word. We know the promises of God. Even when we're having our own devotionals or we're listening to the preaching, you'll have that, that, that moment where God speaks to you and says, this is not what, this I have blessed you, but this is not what you're supposed to be doing. And then all of a sudden, that moment is gone. You go back and turn around and do the opposite thing that you're supposed to be doing. You go and lie, gossip, maybe you go and cheat, do something that, you know, just immediately after God has spoken to you. And then in the same instance, it happened to Isaac. Isaac was just blessed by God. And he turns around and lies about his wife because he was afraid for his life. After, even though he was blessed, he lived in fear. And sometimes we get like that, church. We've been blessed, but sometimes we live in fear. But we need not live in fear. We need to live on the promises that God has given us. And then even though that Isaac had sinned and he had lied to God, the next couple of verses turn around and say that the king said, from now on, I don't want anybody to harm this man or this woman. Just leave them be. And then Isaac went to live on. He got blessed more abundantly. And you ask yourself, even in the faithlessness of Isaac, why does God still bless him? Why does God still bless the generations? Because, church, God, once again, is a covenant-keeping God. And I want to remind us today that even when we sin against him, we must repent of our sins, bring ourselves back into that place where Christ is the center of our lives. Amen? Where Christ can be in our hearts, speaking through the Holy Spirit. Let's allow the Spirit of God to speak to us today as we trust in the Word of God, knowing that even in our sinlessness, even in our faithlessness, God will still love us. He's a covenant-keeping God. It does not mean that we have to sin every time. No, it means that we come into realization. We come into repentance. We come into submission of the Word of God. Then God will continue to bless us because He keeps his word. And I want to encourage you with that word today, church. 
be blessed. Let's pray. Father, thank you for today. Thank you for your word. We pray, O oh God, that you'll help us to understand the principles of your word, dear Lord, and not live in fear, but know that we can live in faith, trusting in the promises of your word. Lord, we stand in faith today and not in fear. We come against the spirit of fear. We come against the spirit of doubt, the spirit of darkness. In the name of Jesus, that we speak the blessings and the prosperity that you promised us through your word. We ask you these things, O oh God, that you protect us and guide us today and cover us with your blood. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, church. I pray you have a blessed day. And I pray that whatever we say and do, remember to honor God. God bless you all.